Welcome to online worship at the Mayville and Campbellsport United Methodist Churches. My name is Steve Delano and we welcome you to this third Sunday of Advent service. I want to remind you that our joint church conference is on Thursday, December 21st at 3.30 p.m. in Mayville with District Superintendent Park Hunter presiding. Please join me in prayer. Lord God, as we gather this day, we open our hearts to you, seeking your healing and transforming love. Our world cries for justice for all people, yet the leaders seem intent on bantering with one another, unmindful of the peace bringers and those who would heal and teach the ways of peace. Be with all of us. Prepare us for this bright light of love which you are sending to us. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our opening hymn is, O Come All Ye Faithful. This hymn was written by John F. Wade. Let us sing. Our New Testament scripture reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 6 through 8 and 19 through 28. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but, but he confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, who are you? 
Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the strap of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The passage from the Gospel of John that I just read introduces us to John the Baptist. Now remember, the other gospel writers speak about John the Baptist as some kind of wild-eyed wilderness guy. He dressed in sackcloth and ate locusts. He screamed and shouted that all needed to repent, that all needed to change their ways. However, this gospel writer John doesn't even speak of him as John the Baptist. His focus is not on the baptizing and repentance of sinners in the Jordan River. He has an entirely different focus that he reveals to us about this man, John, whom God sent. First of all, in the first chapter of the Gospel of John, in the midst of introducing the world to the Word become flesh in Jesus, he tells us that God sent a man named John. He tells us that Jesus is life and that the life is light itself, and that John was sent as a witness to testify to the light so that the world would come to know the presence of God in Jesus. Then we hear the testimony given by John. What exactly is a testimony? Dictionary.com defines testimony in this way. Regarding law, it is the statement or declaration of a witness under oath or affirmation, usually in court. Or another definition is evidence in support of a fact or statement. Proof. We might also think of our testimony in a spiritual sense. We might share our testimony of how we came to our faith in Jesus, or how we came to know God, or how we see God in the midst of our lives. We may be able to give evidence for our faith, our, our belief that God is at work in our lives. While our testimony may not be something that we can prove, it is something that we know is real. It is something that we feel in our soul. Now, why in this particular instance was John giving his testimony? Was he in court? Was he on trial? Or was he sharing something deep within his soul? Just as God sent John to testify, the Pharisees, the Jewish religious leaders, sent priests and Levites to John to question him. They had heard of this radical rabble-rouser that was baptizing people in the Jordan River. He was not sanctioned by the Sadducees or the Pharisees to do this. They needed to find out who he was and why he was doing what he was doing. So in a sense, he was on trial in front of the religious leaders. Thus, his testimony was required. The dialogue commenced as they asked him who he was. At first, he, he didn't give them a direct answer as to who he was. Instead, he told them who he was not. He was not the long-awaited Messiah. He was not Elijah. He was not the prophet. The priests and Levites had probably heard enough of who he wasn't, so they asked again, who are you? John responds, quoting Isaiah 40, verse 3. 
that he is the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. His words don't get much traction with them. They, they can't seem to put two and two together. They cannot see that while he is not the Messiah, he is preparing the way for the Messiah. They need to have something to tell the Pharisees that sent them, so they ask him why he is doing what he is doing. Why are you baptizing? Again, John doesn't directly answer them. He tells them that of the one who is coming after him, the one who he is unworthy of is on his way. On this third Sunday of Advent, we heard John's testimony. John was a witness to the light. Jesus, the light, the Messiah, was coming. The one that all of Israel had been waiting for was coming. Each year during Advent, we read and reflect on this story from one of the Gospels. This story of John the Baptist preparing the way for the Lord. This is relevant to our Christian story in several ways. First, it fulfills Isaiah's prophecy that John the Baptist quoted to the priests and Levites, that God would send someone to prepare the way for the Lord. Second, God announced through John that the wait for the Messiah was over. And third, people were to repent, to get their hearts ready to let God into their lives. As we reflect on this Advent season, we prepare our hearts for the coming of the Lord. We prepare for the birth of the Christ child in the manger in Bethlehem. We begin the Christian year with hope, peace, joy, and love that our faith in God provides abundantly for us. May we, in our testimony, in our witness, prepare the way for the Lord so that others will come to know him, so that others will have hope for tomorrow, that others may find peace in their lives, that others may experience joy of a relationship with God, and that all may know that God's love surrounds them. Amen. Please join me in an attitude of prayer. Loving and gracious God, give peace to our racing hearts. Bring your healing love into our lives. Help us to be those who will bring justice into all of our lives. We have gathered here to sing our praises to you to celebrate the fast approaching coming of your son, to learn ways of justice and hope for all your people healing and comforting God. Empower our hearts and spirits to be strong witnesses of your presence in our lives. Lay your loving hands of healing on all those people who struggle with health issues, who, who grieve over the loss of loved ones. Almighty God, you have so richly poured gifts of love, peace, hope, and joy into our lives. Guide us and encourage us to do your will so that we might make a difference in this world. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, amen.
Please receive the benediction. The trumpet of peace is sounding in the land. We have heard God's word of healing love and are challenged to go forth into God's world with the good news of God's abiding presence with us. Go in peace and may God's peace always be with you. Amen.